All right, so I'm feeling petty today, so I have to come for Elon Musty Pits for the second time, even though I really shouldn't have to explain why oligarchy is a bad thing, but I will anyway because some of y'all are thicker than a Five Guys milkshake. And no, not in a good way. So it's context time. A few days ago, I did a video on Ben Shapiro's latest brain dead take, and God dang, did y'all get big mad over that. So much so that I had to remind y'all that somewhat miraculously, Ben is already spoken for. I know, womp womp, here's a mournful dirge played on the world's tiniest violin. Like a minute or two into said video, I made a comment about Elon spending nearly seven times more money on a dying app than the amount he said he'd pay the UN to end world hunger if they could prove that that's all it took. Which I mean, it's up to you to determine if their numbers are legit. Some estimates are in like the hundreds of billions of dollars, but that's not the point. And anyone who isn't getting high off of Elon's Musk could see that. Like I said, I got a million of them. Evidently, this guy is either on Elon's payroll or his sneaky link list because he insists that Elon is actually the good guy. No, for real, bro. See, his point I'm assuming because there was no way I was wasting time reading an entire book report of a comment is that billionaires good, government bad. To which I said, okay, but who do you think is making those governments bad in the first place? Hmm, could it be the oligarchs financing the campaigns of the same policymakers who insist on creating policy that favors said oligarchs under the guise of job creation when like 40 years worth of data says that's not how that works? To which he said, rah, rah, Marxism, rah, rah, China, rah, rah, liberty and justice for all. Okay, whatever, bucko. But in my futile attempt to get through to this guy, I brought up the matter of conflict minerals and Tesla's alleged ties to them. Now, I say alleged because I can't prove beyond reasonable doubt that Tesla is actively engaged in the conflict mineral trade or not. But I mean, I also can't prove that OJ did it, even though... Okay, so before we get into the Tesla portion of this video, which I know all of y'all came for in the first place, we got to take a crash course in African history, something that admittedly as an American, I can tell you we're about as well versed in as the STEM fields and how our own government works. Anyway, our story begins in 1885 when King Leopold II convinced all his imperialist bro friends to just let him white man's burden his way into sovereignty over the natives of the Congo River Basin, because that's how that worked back then. Duh. All this despite Leo's own country basically saying, oh my God, we can't afford this. I hope you kept the receipt. Take it back now. But Leo being a giant POS said bollocks to that and didn't so much colonize the region as he did convert it into his own personal ATM slash killing field. Jokes aside, though, I don't have nearly the time to get into all the atrocities Leo committed in the Congo. But when you go look it up, which I know you're going to, if you haven't already, just remember, all that happened in a privately owned corporatist state. Yay, oligarchy! Anyway, we fast forward now to 1908, when Leo was forced to hand over control of his little fiefdom to the Belgian government, who weren't the greatest of taskmasters themselves, but at least they weren't chopping dicks and tits off for fun. So that's something. I'm not going to go all the way through the Congo colonial period because one, like I said, African history is nowhere near my bag. And two, I mean, it was a colony overexploited and underrepresented. That's usually how that goes. Duh. I mean, Americans fought a whole war over it, except when we went through our rebellious phase, we actually had leaders educated and competent enough to get us through that awkward. OK, now what? Period. Even though barely see Shay's rebellion. But back to the Congo, like I said, the Belgians didn't care to educate their Congolese subjects because why would they? Haven't you heard of Toussaint Louverture? So with some notable exceptions like Patrice Lumumba, for example, the Congolese natives were woefully ill-equipped for self-governance. Additionally, upon gaining independence, Western forces and private interests immediately went to work undermining the new black revolutionary government. Gee, I wonder where I've seen that before. How, you may ask? Well, by immediately throwing their armed support behind the seceding rebel forces in the Congo's most mineral-rich region. And when Lumumba requested help from the UN, the US, and France, they all told him to kick rocks and die because capitalism, obviously. So Lumumba turned to the Soviets, which began a series of events that eventually led to his arrest, his execution, burial, and dismemberment. In that order. And yes, the U.S., the U.N., and the Belgians were just fine with this because capitalism, duh. 
In fact, Lumumba would have probably gotten to keep his head and lead the Congo into pretty much anything other than what it became, if not for the U.S., U.N., and Belgium legitimizing the guys that screwed him over in the first place. Speaking of, Mobutu Sese Seko, or Joseph if you're nasty, was one of those guys. And from 61 until 97, he was pretty much the reason why the Congo was and still is such a mess. What with all of the cronying and embezzling and corruption and general all-around ineptitude at governing. So your standard run-in-the-mill African strongman. You know how that goes. So my point is the reason the DRC has basically been Southside Chirac on crack since the late 90s. Well, I guess it's already on crack, isn't it? Super crack is because of colonizers doing colonizer things. Which now brings me to Tesla. For those of you who don't know, every Tesla vehicle is powered by a lithium ion battery, one of the primary components of which is cobalt. If you don't know, the DRC produces 60% of the world's cobalt supply. Since the 90s, warring Congolese factions have been financing their efforts through the sale of conflict minerals, including cobalt and coltan. No relation. So long story short, impoverished black people are selling minerals to the same white people who impoverished them in the first place just to finance their campaign of self-genocide. And they say we've forgotten our roots. Now, technically, cobalt is not listed as a conflict mineral, but its largest deposits are in a conflict zone. So follow the cookie crumbles. Couldn't be Tesla, though. Not my smart car. All my blood minerals are responsibly sourced. Okay, shut up and have a listen, bucko. Now, to be fair, Tesla and Musk have said they are moving away from cobalt batteries, partly because of the whole child labor thing and bigly because of the cost margin thing. And like half the vehicles being produced by Tesla now not having cobalt batteries, despite just two years ago, Elon securing a multi-year deal with Glencore, a Swiss mining company, all of whose mines are in the DRC, by the way, to produce 6,000 metric tons of the stuff annually. But credit to where credit is due, I guess. My point is, we try to be as fair as possible here, and I'm not going to cap like Tesla uses black baby blood for transmission fluid. But cobalt isn't the only blood mineral that goes into producing your rich uncle's Model X. The other is coltan. Again, no relation. And that is listed as a conflict mineral. And you know why that matters? Because coltan can be found in virtually every electronic device on the planet. So just remember that the next time you're writing your 12 tweet dissertation on the patriarchal origins of capitalism on your iPhone S12 or whatever. Tech producers like Apple, Intel, and of course the subject of our video are required by the Dodd-Frank Act to vet how and from where they source their raw materials. This led to the creation of the ITSCI, a self-policed and self-governing program designed to purge the presence of conflict minerals in the supply chain. The problem is this self-governing, self-policing program was created by the ITA and the TIC, two firms that represent the interest of the world's biggest buyers of the three T's of tech production, tin, tungsten, and tantalum, a.k.a. coltan. You see where this is going, right? Black Jesus must have finally gotten that thousand dollar seed I sold like four years ago for an unrelated miracle that oddly hasn't happened yet. Wonder why that is. But the day I started writing this script, the Global Witness, a nonprofit also designed to prevent the trade of conflict minerals that just so happens to not be corporately funded, published a report that provides evidence of the ITSCI's willful and at times intentional undermining of its own vetting system. Funny how that worked out. The report says that there is substantial evidence that suggests that the ITSCI launders the bulk of its minerals from conflict and child labor mines. For instance, in the Nzibira sector, less than 20% of the 83 metric tons of minerals tagged came from validated mines in the area. In one mining area, up to 90% of materials introduced into the ITSCI program in the first quarter of this year did not come from mines validated for meeting security and human rights standards. 
and similar presence exists in 10 different areas in the African Great Lakes region. Interviews with officials, traders, miners, and others confirmed that the bulk of minerals tagged came from unvalidated mines in the neighboring territories, including mines occupied by militias and one where children frequently worked. One of those mines was Lukoma, where militia has used violence against the local population and forced miners to work unpaid. ITSCI has been aware of the contaminated supply chain since at least 2014, but has done jack and all to address it, let alone acknowledge the complicity of its own officers in the laundering scheme, something that was brought to the ITSCI's attention by both the local NGO and a U.S. Commission consultant in 2015, and again in a U.N. report in 2018, and yet again in this most recent report. The report also indicated that in Rwanda, only 10% of its exported minerals were actually produced from Rwandan mines. The rest was smuggled in from the DRC. So again, I can't prove Elon's wealth was made off the backs of half pint Hutu hitters, but I mean, come on, man. If it walks like a duck, quack like a duck, then give it a crop top sailor suit in the voice of a chain smoking Jewish grandmother gargling gravel. And I mean, it's not like Elon didn't grow up being desensitized to the idea of black people's labor being exploited to fund his own eccentricities. Might explain this, huh? Okay, so let's get serious for a second now. I'll call my own self on the carpet and say initially I just made this video to stick in the craw of the Muscovites because again, I'm petty like that. But as has come to be the case on this channel, once I actually took a step back and considered the human toll of all of this, I was forced to push my own small dick energy to the curb, even if for a moment. In the West, America especially, we have a very bad habit of looking down on developing countries for just not getting their <laughs> together when like nine times out of ten, that's as much our fault, if not more so, than their own. Well, not me specifically, obviously. I'm black, so technically I'm an expat. I don't want to dwell on the white supremacy aspect of all of this, but I feel like this is especially true for developing nations of color, those in the dark continent in particular, despite, you know, Africa being home to like five or six of the world's fastest growing economies, but what's facts against centuries worth of confirmation bias? My point is, even if only to a small degree, what's happening in the DRC and in Southeast Asian sweatshops for that matter and so on is all of our fault. Exactly how we go about fixing that, I genuinely can't answer because let's keep it a buck. No one in the first world is surviving a day without Disney Plus and Hulu in their back pocket. Unless you're the Unabomber. <laughs>